I used to be a clown, and I hated it. At first, it seems kind of fun, getting dressed up in your silly costume and going to parties to entertain a bunch of happy little children. Really, it only goes like that about 1% of the time, though. Usually, it's more like this. Get dressed up in your overly complicated costume and makeup that you're fucking sick of, and then go attempt to entertain a bunch of snot-nosed brats who spend most of the time trying to stab you with things, or crying. Sounds glorious, huh? Worst of all, I didn't even get to pick my clown name. I worked for an agency that handled a bunch of us, and they gave me the glorious name of... <sighs> Blubbo the Clown. I mean, what the fuck? I'm not even a fat guy or anything. What I'm gonna tell you about today is the last job I ever took as a clown, professional or otherwise. I got the call for the job at about 9am from my ballbuster of a boss. Apparently one of the other clowns called out that day and he was scheduled for a party across town at 3 that afternoon. I was going to refuse at first, but I was getting ready to quit and decided I should probably get as much cash saved up as possible before I did. I agreed and rolled out of bed to start the process of changing from plain old me into Blubbo the goddamn clown. Anyone out there who has ever had to get the whole clown ensemble together knows it takes a while. Got the makeup, the wig, the outfit with many layers and tricks built into it, and lastly all the different tricks you have to get together to perform for the kids. Balloon animals and squirting flowers take a lot more prep time than you would expect. Anyway, I finished getting all that bullshit ready at about 1 that afternoon. As I already said, the gig was across town, so I hopped in the car and headed out. I stopped for a little bit and got some food from a drive through The last thing you want to do is head into a Burger King dressed like a clown on a Saturday afternoon. I arrived at the job 15 minutes early. It's good practice, as there are usually still a couple more things you have to do when you get there. I swung my feet out of my car and slid my giant clown shoes on over my regular shoes. And they would squeak with each step. After a couple of years, each squeak was like a knife to the brain. I grabbed my small trunk out of the passenger seat and headed towards the house where the party was supposed to be, squeaking like a fucking chew toy with each step. I had the exact address, but the house was easy to spot regardless. Balloons on the mailbox, cute little suburban tradition. I made my way up to the walk, dragging my little trunk behind me, those stupid squeaks heralding my arrival. Before I had a chance to even knock on the door, it swung open. A man stood in the doorway with a huge grin on his face. He was wearing a pinstripe suit and had his hair slipped back, but his face looked off. He was gaunt and wild-eyed, his skin was glistening with sweat. It seemed almost as oily as his hair. He looked like an escaped mental patient that had landed a photo shoot for GQ. You must be Chimmy, our clown for the day, he said excitedly as I walked up towards him. I put on my friendliest goofball clown face and responded, No sir, no sir, I'm Blubbo. Blubbo the clown at your service. I made a little bow and honked my nose. I'm afraid Jimmy was feeling under the weather. Blobbo? He frowned as he said my name. But you're not even fat. I sighed to myself. Do you want me to go around the side? I asked, trying to perk myself back up. I can surprise the kitties in the backyard. No need, just come in this way. The party's in the living room. He motioned me in through the front door. His smile had returned. It actually creeped me out. Usually, the parents did not seem quite so excited to see me. I made my way up the front steps and in through the front door. He followed me in and I heard the door click closed behind me. This is when I realized something was wrong. I had done this a hundred times. It was always the same. As soon as you got in the house or into the backyard, you'd hear them. The kids, that is. 
Running, screaming, playing, waiting to test the limits of your ability to smile under the most hectic and annoying of circumstances. Here, though, standing in the entranceway to this house, I didn't hear anything. Like, not a goddamn thing. The place was as silent as the grave. Which way to the party? I asked. I could hear my silly clown voice crack and become my real voice as I said it. The man in the pinstripe suit smiled at me with his big toothy grin and genuinely excited eyes and pointed me down the hall. Down that way, to the right. Can't miss it, he said as he slapped me on the back. I took a few steps down the hall, the man following close behind, still hearing nothing at all besides the squeak of my damn shoes. I stopped. Something was wrong, and I wanted out of there. I think I left something in my car, I said to the man, looking for any reason to get out of there. Mind if I just go back and grab it? He frowned again and brought his hand to his chin as if he were thinking. Then he reached behind his back and pulled out a 38 revolver. He pointed the gun at my face and a look of sheer terror must have come over my face as the man's smile returned to his. You had to make this difficult, eh, Blobbo? He said to me as he pushed the gun forward against my rubber nose, making it honk. He laughed when he heard it. Not a sinister laugh, either, but a childlike giggle. I don't know why, but that made it way more terrifying. Man, if you want some cash, my wallet's in my car. We can go get it right now, I said, clown persona obviously washed away entirely now by fear. I don't want your money. He motioned me down the hall again. I turned around and started walking. With each stupid, squeaking step, he tapped me in the back of the head with the gun barrel, like he was reminding me he was there. When I got to the entranceway that led into the living room, I turned and saw something that I wish I could forget. Sitting on the couch was a family, the actual owners of the house. On the left was the father. He was covered in blood. His head hung back, staring up at the ceiling, and an axe was buried in his chest. On the right side of the couch was the mom. She looked as if she'd been shot through the head, her brains drawing on the wall behind her. In the middle was their daughter, still very much alive. She had been bound and gagged, tears streaming down her face. She couldn't have been any older than eight. I felt like I was going to puke. Suddenly, I felt a fist crash into my kidney fell forward onto one knee and growled in pain. Start the show, Blubbo! The man screamed as he walked around in front of me and sat in a recliner next to the couch. She's been waiting for you. Little bitch hasn't stopped crying for the last three days. I'm hoping you can put a smile on her face. I lifted my head and stared daggers into the man. My brain couldn't even grasp what he was saying to me. I looked back towards the girl. She was staring at me. Sobbing desperation, her eyes screaming for help I didn't know how to give. The show? I growled through my teeth. Three days, he had said. The sick bastard had been there with the girl for three goddamned days. I'm not putting on any show. You're insane, I screamed at him. I was so angry I almost forgot he was pointing a gun at my face. Without a word, he jumped out of the chair and pistol whipped me across the face. I felt my cheek open up, and blood rushed down my face as I hit the ground. Then what the fuck good are you? He got down next to me, so close I could feel the heat of his breath on my face. I loved clowns when I was a kid. I just wanted to share that joy with my new little friend here. He stood up and walked over to the girl. My vision was fuzzy, but I could see him touching her hair, hear him giggling. I was in pain. I felt sick to my stomach, and I wanted to cry and scream at the same time. His back was to me, though. The gun was pointed off to the side. I had to act right then, or I might end up dead. I'm sorry, sweetie. This clown isn't as funny as I thought he would be, he said to the girl as he held her by the chin. Maybe we should get a magician. I always used to love those, too. I sprung up with all the strength I had, wielding my small trunk like a hammer. I dove over the coffee table as the squeak of my fucking clown shoes betrayed me. 
He turned to face me, but couldn't wheel the gun around fast enough. I struck him across the face with a little trunk full of clown props. I heard the gun go off as the trunk broke open, and a bunch of colored balloons sprayed out like confetti. The compressed air tank I used to fill them hit the ground with a clunk. The gun flew out of his hand and bounced off the recliner before landing in the hall. I tried to recompose myself, but he was quicker. He backhanded me across the face, catching the cut he had made with the pistol whip and causing new hot pain to shoot behind my eyes. I stumbled over my own clown shoes, squeak motherfucking squeak, and fell to the side, catching my shoulder on the coffee table. I howled in pain and writhed on the floor as he stood over me, a fresh welt developing on the side of his face. You are the worst goddamn clown I've ever seen! He pointed to the girl, still crying her eyes out. Look what you did! You scared her even more! I looked up at him as he grabbed the axe handle and pulled the bladed head free from the father's chest with a wet sucking sound. All you had to do was make her laugh! He kept screaming at me. My hand fumbled around for anything I could fight him with. I saw him pull the axe back and get ready to lift it over his head. My fingers touched cold metal. It was the small can of compressed air. I wrapped my fingers around it just as he lifted the axe overhead. I sat up as quick as I could, ignoring my pain, and drove the can into his ribs with all my strength. This threw off his swing, and the axe landed in the coffee table with a thud. He staggered backwards, and I got myself up to my feet in time to strike him again with the can, knocking him down. I turned to the girl to make sure she was okay. I bent down to start untying her, when I heard him start to shuffle behind me. My hit with the can hadn't been enough. He was trying to scramble for the gun. I pulled the axe from the table and moved towards him as quick as I could. First step, squeak. He grabbed the gun. Second step, squeak. I pulled the axe back. Third step, squeak. He raised the gun. Fourth step, squeak. I swung. I caught him right in the side of the neck. The gun fired off to my left, making my ears ring, but missing my face by a few inches. Blood spurted out of his neck as my momentum brought me forward into him. We both fell to the floor. I lay next to him as the blood pooled around him, watching him die, knowing I did it and not feeling any guilt. He tried to speak, choking words through spurts of blood. Blubbo, the fucking clown. Not even a fat guy. With those words, the life drained from his eyes. I got up and untied the girl. I picked her up and she buried her face in my shoulder, a spot where I wasn't covered in blood. I carried her out of the nightmare and back towards my car. I set her down on the hood and grabbed my phone from the glove compartment. I called the cops, even though it was redundant. If the gunshots from the house didn't get a neighbor to do it, I'm sure the blood-soaked clown carrying the child down the street did. I sat on the ground next to my car and waited for them to show up. The girl was still on the hood, crying. I wanted to give her comfort, but what the fuck would I have even said? The whole thing had barely even sunk in with me yet. I thought about the man's last words. Couldn't get them out of my head. Not even a fat guy. <laughs> I laughed. Softly at first. And then more and more until it was a full-on breakdown. <sighs> what a sight. Those cops must have seen as the pulled up. A blood-soaked clown, laying in the street, laughing, as a traumatized eight-year-old sat on the hood of a shitty car, crying. The first thing I did when the cops cleared me was quit being a clown. I told my boss to make sure that the next guy who got the name Blubbo was a fucking fat guy. <laughs>